Hey there, I'm Aleki, and this is the first tutorial in what I hope to be a series on the basics of station years. As we stand right now in February 2024, the tutorials that are built into the game are currently disabled as the devs are working on redoing them to be compatible with the latest updates to the game. I tend to frequent the subreddit for station years as well as other um, few community discussion groups and I see a fair amount of people who are asking ba questions about the basics of the game. So I'm creating this in the hope that it will help you jump into the game and be able to get started whether the tutorials aren't yet re-enabled or maybe you're just sitting at work hoping uh, to play when you get home and just want to watch something to scratch your itch about the game. Or perhaps you're just somebody who learns better from uh, seeing another person describe these to you rather than working through an in-game tutorial yourself. So without further ado, let's jump into the game and look at the interface and controls of Stationeers. We are now standing on the surface of Mars at the beginning of a new game. The choice of planet and the differences between them is something that I'm going to cover in a future video. For now, we're going to focus on how to control and understand your environment. In the bottom right, you have several displays. In Stationeers, your suit so long as your helmet is closed, maintain a, a separate atmosphere from your environment. That is what the internal uh, window displays for you. It shows you the pressure and the temperature inside your suit, as well as the targets that your suit is trying to achieve. Depending on your outside environment and your suit's resources, your suit may or may not be able to achieve the desired temperature and pressure. For example, you can see that the target right now is 101 kilopascals. However, my suit is only maintaining 93 kilopascals. I'm actually not sure why it's having a bit of trouble with that on Mars at the beginning of the game. On the other hand, the temperature, I want it to maintain 20 degrees, and it is right now at 20 degrees. Below that, you see a display for the jetpack. Uh, right now, the thrust of my jetpack is zero, and I have 5,709 kilopascals pressure in my jetpack tank. The jetpack in Stationeers uses the pressure of your propellant gas to help you jump and fly. It does not require combustion, so it is not a rocket jet. It is merely acting through the pressure of that gas. How to refill that is something that we'll get into a later tutorial. The external display lets you know what's happening outside your suit. For example, right now on Mars, there are, there's a pressure of two kilopascals and the arrow down to the left of that tells me that the pressure is too low to be survivable. Below that, we have the outside temperature, which is 19 degrees Celsius. This would be perfectly okay to survive in. However, one thing that is not shown here that you do need to be mindful of is what are the gases in the environment? If you're planning to open up your helmet, you need to be in an atmosphere that has sufficient oxygen and does not have any harmful gases. Unfortunately, on Mars, that is not the case because the atmosphere does not have nearly sufficient oxygen. It is primarily carbon dioxide. Below that, you see your compass. So right now I'm facing a heading of 102. As I turn, that changes on a um, 0 to 360 scale, basically the, the number of degrees that I am facing on a compass. 0 degrees denotes north, with 90 being east, 180 being south, and 270 being west. Below that is the speed at which I am moving. Right now I'm stationary, so 0 meters. If I start moving, then I'll be going about 3 or 4 meters per second. 
To the left of that, you have your vitals display. Right now, you can see my food level and hydration level. And you may have noticed that these are slowly decreasing as my character consumes food and water. Were these to reach zero, you would start taking damage. You do not immediately die. Um, you will have a new display in there that shows your health. You would only die once your health is reduced to zero through damage. And that can be damage from hunger, thirst, taking environmental damage, falling. Um, anything that damages you will reduce that. Since that is not display, it means that right now I am at full health. In the middle of my screen, at the bottom, you can see the two hand slots. You have a left hand and a right hand. Each one can hold an item. Pressing E allows you to toggle between the two hands to change which one is active. When you're using items, you're always using the item from your active hand. As well as um, being able to throw items with Q. I guess we should pick that up. And to pick up an item, you point to it until you see this highlight around it and left click. T allows you to place an item in an exact fashion. So rather than throwing, I'm able to place it exactly where I want. On the bottom left side of my screen, you see the equipment slots. That is the gear that you are currently wearing. And you can open their detail panels with the numbers one through six on your keyboard. You start with a helmet, a suit, a backpack, a uniform, and a belt. You do not start with glasses. That is something that you can build in game later on. If you press the corresponding number, a window will open that displays the functions and inventory of that equipment piece. For example, the helmet allows you to open it, lock it, turn your light on or off, and flush the gas inside your helmet. Right now, my helmet is closed, so the action button says open helmet. You'll also see that the open helmet is red because my helmet right now is locked. This is to prevent accidentally opening your helmet in an inhospitable environment. In order to click buttons, you will want to hold the Alt key, and that releases the mouse pointer and allows you to move the mouse around in order to click on things, drag inventory items, and so on. For example, if I click the unlock helmet, that allows me to now open it. Since Mars does not have a survival atmosphere, I'm not going to do that right now. I recommend you always keep your helmet locked so that you don't accidentally hit the hotkey to open it. The hotkey to open your helmet is I. The light button toggles your suit light. As you can see, night has fallen and I have a headlamp that is projecting a cone of light in front of me. If I click this button or press the L key, the light is turned off. Turning off your light can help you reduce the power consumption of your suit. So you may want to do that in daylight or when you are in an artificially lit environment. The flush key allows you to empty the gas that is within your helmet into the outside environment. That can be useful if some contaminant somehow got into your helmet. You can flush whatever is in your helmet and your suit will replenish the atmosphere in your helmet from your air tank. Below the helmet, you see the EVA suit window. In the EVA suit, you have controls for the pressure, the temperature, and whether your filter, air supply, 
and air conditioner are on or off. The pressure and temperature set the target pressure and temperature that we talked about in the internal display in the bottom right. And these are the goals that your suit will try to achieve using power and your air supply to increase or decrease pressure, to warm or cool you down as much as it can. When you are in an extreme environment, your suit is not going to be able to necessarily meet these thresholds. It's important to keep the pressure at a level where your helmet will provide you with a sufficient concentration of oxygen. If you're breathing pure oxygen, you could reduce this pressure quite significantly and still be able to breathe. For example, I'm going to turn down my pressure to 50 kilopascals, which will make my suit actually drop it to about 41. However, as you can see, I am not suffering from low pressure, even though with four, I reduced it from about 100 to 40. That is because your starter tank is pure oxygen, so you do not need a very high pressure to receive sufficient oxygen. Likewise, with the temperature, I can turn that down and I will still be fine, for example, at 10 degrees Celsius. And I could turn it up, for example, to even, let's say, about 35 degrees. And my character will still be comfortable. This can be a way in which you can save on your resources if you are in a very cold, or very hot environment. Below the buttons of the suit, you will see the inventory of the suit. All six slots in the suit are for specific items. The air tank and the waste tank can only receive some sort of gas canister. The life support will only receive a battery and the three filter slots will only receive a filter item. The air tank is the tank that your suit is pulling gas to supply your helmet from. So you will want this to be a tank of clean oxygen or some sort of breathable mixture. For the time being, just think of it as pure oxygen tank. Um, there is not a strong reason to use a different mix in your helmet, and your character will not suffer in any way from breathing pure oxygen for the entirety of the game. The waste tank is where your suit will put whatever it filters out of your helmet. So whether that is a mix of oxygen and carbon dioxide because it's working hard to cool you and thus cycling faster through your air, or it is just pure carbon dioxide that it's filtering out from what you're breathing, the gas will get pushed into this tank. So normally you are going to want an empty tank, and you can see that as my character is breathing, the pressure in my air tank is slowly dropping, and the pressure in my waste tank is slowly increasing. The battery is used to power all functions of your suit. If this battery runs out, you are going to no longer get the benefit of any air conditioning that the suit does. You are no longer get the benefit of filtration and the light is going to go out. The filters are used by your suit to remove certain types of gases from your helmet atmosphere. In this case, you are starting with three carbon dioxide filters, meaning the only gas that will be removed from your helmet is carbon dioxide. That makes sense because you start with pure oxygen tank. Every breath, your character will use up some oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide into the helmet. The filters allow your suit to take that carbon dioxide and move it into the waste tank. Since all three filters are carbon dioxide, only the first one is being used up. And you can see that the percentage on my filter has dropped 
from 100% since I started this game to 87. You will need in time to create more filters and replace these. Once the first filter reaches 0%, then the suit is going to start using the second one and then the third one. If you run out of filters, your suit will no longer filter carbon dioxide out of your helmet. You will receive warnings as filters get consumed. So if you listen to those warnings or check in this window, you ha generally have ample time to create new filters and replace them. The fourth piece of equipment that you have is your jetpack. The jetpack has one specific slot for propellant in which you have to put a canister with any sort of gas that will be used to propel you through the air. As I mentioned before, your jetpack works based on pressure, not combustion. So any gas under pressure in this tank will work. You do need to be aware that this gas is going to be released in your environment. So if you are in a enclosed base where you've created a breathable atmosphere, you need to be careful not to use your jetpack if the gas in the air is something that would poison that atmosphere or perhaps combust with that atmosphere. The other slots of your backpack are general purpose slots that can hold any type of item. You can tell that by the fact that they, unlike the propellant slot, they do not have a label at the bottom. To move items around in your inventory, the easiest way is to hold Alt, and then you can drag them in between slots. The fifth equipment slot is your uniform. The uniform has two generic inventory slots that can be used for any type of item. And then it has an access card and credit card slot that can only be used for items of that type. I'm not too familiar with the access card. I believe it can be used in order to lock access to doors um, and perhaps other equipment in a multiplayer environment and then limit who can use them based on their access card. I personally have never used it as I mostly play single player. The credit card stores your credits, which are used for trade. Trade is a mid-game topic that we will tackle further down the road. For now, just hang on to that credit card, but you won't have a use for it until you have a trade platform. The sixth and last slot of equipment holds your belt. You start with a tool belt in which all slots can only hold tools. As you can see, I have wrench, crowbar, and a whole bunch of other tools. It's important to note that cable coils also count as a tool, so you can store them in here. For each item slot, certain items have the ability to have their own inventory or controls. For example, this hand drill shows this four square icon at the top left, indicating that it has its own properties panel. Holding left, alt, and clicking on it, I can see its inventory, in which case it is a battery slot. This is an electrical hand drill, so the battery is what is going to power it to function. If this drill does not have a battery or the battery has run out, you would not be able to use it. So this is something that is important to keep track of because you could end up in a situation where you're out of batteries or out of fuel for your welder and be unable to use those tools. The welder, for example, has an on button and a gas canister in which a fuel mixture is present. The welder does not do anything unless it's turned on. 
in order to turn on the item in your active hand, you can press the O key or you can right click. Once the dweller is on, you would be able to use it to build things with it. However, for the welder, as for the electrical tools, its fuel or battery will get consumed as you are using it. So it is important to turn it off when uh, you are done using it. For the welder in particular, it's also important to know that it will release the gases that result from combustion in your environment. So welding in an enclosed space will release some degree of noxious gases in that space. For that reason, it's better to weld everything you need inside your base before you pressurize it. By now, I've spent a good amount of time since the game started. So in the top right of my screen, I have two warning items. The top one, which looks like a glass of water, indicates that my water is getting low. If you look at my vitals display, my water is at 31%. So this yellow warning icon lets me know that soon I will need some water. It is not yet a critical situation, which would be indicated by a red warning icon of the same type. However, it informs me that it's something I should start thinking about. Likewise, the lightning bolt icon is telling me that the battery in my suit is starting to get low. For the battery, you will get that warning once it drops below 50%. That concludes going over the interface and basic controls of Stationeers. There are more controls that you can discover by looking in the settings window. And you can also use the small hotkey displays next to some of these windows to let you know or remind you of what hotkeys do what. I hope you found this video useful and I hope this helps more new people get into this amazing, amazing game that I've been playing for several years now. And if you find this useful, please give this video a like so I know that, you know, I'm not spending my time in vain creating these. If you'd like to get a notification when I put out the next video in this series, then please subscribe and also turn on the bell icon. Um, I learned that YouTube does not actually notify your videos unless you click the bell item, the bell icon. The subscription is alone is not sufficient for that. And if you have any questions about the game or want to make sure I cover certain topics, leave me a comment. I will do my best to include everything that people find useful in these videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one.